So some of the tasks that we're working on today is uh, cleaning up the mess from the tree. This is an, a very old maple tree, as you can see, it's quite large. And this limb during the summertime just sort of split off of the tree and came down. And it's actually, parts of it are still attached to the tree and it's, it's still alive, but this is going to be the perfect wood for us to create some more shiitake spawn logs. And so what Ed and Lucius are doing today is cutting and collecting logs for a totem method of inoculation of shiitake spawn for our mushroom garden. So we thank you, big glorious tree, for your limb here that we're gonna use, this old, old tree, and um, just clean up, do a little bit of maintenance and clean up as we go. So one of the things that we utilize here are electric tools. And what we like about that is that we will be setting up a solar panel embankment and a battery bank and then we can charge our tools uh, via the sun without any fossil fuel inputs so we're pretty excited about that. It sure makes it easier on the snow. All these up and must be right. So this is our mushroom garden. Um, we have shiitake totems here, shiitake plug there, and then the further ones in the back are oysters and. We've gotten some flushes from the from the oysters already, and then we've noticed some inoculation with our uh, shiitakes. Uh, most notably, <laughs> you can see the spawn has come through the wood here, so we know that this particular totem has been infected with the shiitake spawn so we should be getting flushes from these the nice thing um, about mushroom gardens is that uh, you do not need the sun you do not need the sun for these to grow obviously and each one of these logs will produce food for up to eight years so that's yet another protein source, another food source um, that we are putting in here in our food forest. So looking forward to, to getting some of these mushroom flushes when they're ready. So while Ed and Lucius work outside, working on the uh, maple tree and the limbs, the downed limb and the mushroom uh, garden work. Um, I'm going to be painting our second um, lands beehive. So I've prepared my uh, stay wet palette and I'm just going to be putting some paint here. If you are an acrylic painter 
then um, you'll know that acrylic paint dries really fast. And so the Stay Wet palette actually helps um, to keep your paint moist for a longer amount of time. So I'm just prepping that because I am gonna be painting our second beehive. The first beehive I did kind of like a Viking theme. And this one is gonna be uh, Lord of the Rings. So I'm gonna be painting the Shire. I just, I'm a huge fan. So I figured why not? So I'm just gonna prep my palette and then bring it down to the garage and start painting the beehive because I wanna see art everywhere I go. So anyway, uh, yeah, just getting on with that. And um, once things start warming up, we'll be putting out our two beehives and hopefully we can catch a swarm. Um, if not, then we may have to purchase a queen and, and, um, and go that route, but fingers crossed we can capture a swarm. So here's my hive, the front of my hive, and I did a sketch of the Shire, and then I thought it would be kind of cute to do each of the bee doors. Uh, it could be eat, eat three different um, hobbit holes. So just have my rough sketch here, and then my palette here and colors. So I'll start painting, and obviously this is will be a work in progress, and I'll share some updates with it. I, I can't really film and paint at the same time, so I'll show you after a bit, but we're just going to start in layers and make this a very beautiful um, beehive and Lord of the Rings themed beehive. So this is my uh, Viking lands beehive. Um, the inspiration for this came from thoughts about honey and and what an amazing thing honey is. Uh, it has therapeutic qualities. It it doesn't ever rot. They found honey in um, Egyptian mummy tombs that is still good, crystallized but still good, and it got me to thinking about the alchemy of honey and what humans can do to honey, for instance, make mead and mead and beer were often created by women in the medieval times. And so I was thinking about this. One of my great grandfathers was Swedish. And so I started researching runes and rune stones and Normally, rune stones are erected for great men that have fallen in battle or kings, and I didn't really care about that. I was more interested in rune stones erected for women. And there are a few. One of them is called the Odendisa rune stone or the Hasmira rune stone uh, in Sweden. And the runes on the serpents here are exact translation from that rune stone and it's about a, a wife who who has died and the husband was very very sad and so he erected this rune stone praising his wife and it just bees or the melissa are part of this sort of female you know all the the bees are female the queen is female except for the drones but the honey producing bees are female. And so it just really felt natural to put this um, link and this Viking inspired link to part of my heritage. Um, that particular rune stone was erected in 1050. So this is quite old. And um, I don't know, hopefully we'll get good honey out of it once we get our bees. But that was the inspiration for this first a hive and the art of this first hive and I'm really excited for the second hive which is an homage um, to Lord of the Rings so I'll share that second hive once I get it painted but anyways thank you for for visiting our site and sharing some of our journey with us and we'll see you in the next video